if it's one thing I see people trying to teach their kids that, uh, to shoot that really upsets me is giving them a, something like a 30 odd six or a 12 gauge shotgun. Well, good afternoon, gang. I'm outside. I'm uh, <laughs> out by the old shed trying to get out of this horrendous wind to bring you this video. And if you've read the title, you know what we're already talking about. It's the 3030 Remington Managed Recoil Loads. Now here's a, here's a story on this. These are 125 grain Corlocks soft points. My daughter uh, has been going with me for deer hunting for the last couple years and she's a teenager now. And so this year she expressed interest in actually hunting. So, like most people, we went to range and shot a lot of 22s through my uh, old Marlin 60. And, and she enjoyed it. She had a lot of fun. You make it fun. We used clay targets. We used what I call reaction targets. When you, you know, those ones you can see the hits on the paper really good. Clay targets bust up. Um, stuff like that. Make it fun for them. Well, here is... The mandatory coal Remington 3030 125 grain. I don't know if you can see that very well or not. I hope y'all seeing that really well. So it says, you know, old Corlock got a lot of lead. The 150 grain has a lot of lead at the front. Now, I used a 3030, I've used 3030 for a long time. This is my dad's 3030. He bought this year before I was born so it's about 55 56 years old uh, knowing my dad he bought it used so it's probably older than that but it's been in our family for at least 55 years it's the 3030 I uh, first killed my deer with now my dad was strict iron sight guy <laughs> he would he would not go for a scope <clears throat> so but me I shoot a lot and um, so I go with scope so I actually um, had a different scope on here when I used it. But I used this for years. I used 170 grain uh, Remington uh, core locks. I used the hollow point 170 grains. Uh, they uh, they do a number. Um, but I knew that for my daughter, that 170 grain may be a little bit much for her. So I looked around and my choice was either the federal 125 grain hollow point um, or um, the Remington. I believe Hornady also has a um, reduced recoil um, 150 grain, I believe. So, but these is what I ordered. Uh, loved them. Love. I've always loved Remingtons. Um, but I, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. The last eight, nine, ten years. I, I hadn't been loving them so much uh, and we'll get to that down the road but anyway my daughter uh, it was raining every time we went out to rain shoot this uh, she managed to shoot it once and she was surprised with the recoil she it didn't it didn't scare her or you know she just didn't expect it to have that much and this was re a reduced recoil it was more than what she was expecting but it didn't scare her enough to develop a flinch um so she, she, i loaded um hers with these 125 grains now the back of the box of this these remington uh, managed recoil i hope y'all can see this uh, i don't know if it's picking it up or not it's not I mean it looks blurry to me through the viewfinder there we go that looks better okay it says you don't have to re uh, adjust your scope for these um, and I found that to be true I sighted this rifle in with 170 grain Remington core locks and um, two inches high at 50 yards and these shot the same and I'll show you the the group uh, where a picture of the group where I shot
I was really impressed that uh, the recoil really was, you, you could tell a huge difference. When you went from 170 grain down to these, night and day difference. And so that makes a big difference. And I, I like that. Shot this, she only shot it once because um, it was raining. So we went and she goes, I w she said, Dad, I, I like that. She goes, I wish I could shoot it more to get a little bit more confidence. And I, I said, okay, baby, I got, I got you. Uh, I said, you know, maybe if we get a good day, I'll pull you out of school early and we'll go back to range and shoot it. Well, that was a, never happened. So first day morning opening season came, we were hunting in a spot that I always hunt at. And um, so here comes this, <laughs> we had three does at different times come up to us but they were always on my side and not her side so i said hey they're coming from the opposite direction they should let's switch let's switch um sides and so she didn't see another there so about nine o'clock she was getting cold i said okay let's go get warmed up get us a snack maybe some hot chocolate something so we hadn't walked 10 yards i look up here's this doe about 70 yards away looking at us and I had a shooting stick. I'd cut a shooting stick that morning for my old limb. And I was carrying a gun and she was behind me. I said, hey, get up there, get up there, you know. I said, there's a doe out there. And I gave her the stick, got her on the rifle. I said, now, she was kind of courting to us just ever so slightly. I said, put it on her shoulder, uh, front of her shoulder, through her chest, like I, like I taught you. Because we went over a lot of videos. I went over a lot of presentations on where to shoot a deer at different positions and she smoked them uh the deer run off she started crying because she thought she missed i said and i had watched the deer and seen it run out there about 60 yards and flop over in a thicket and she didn't see that far she seen his poor little deer leg flopping and where she'd hit it in the front shoulder um and but i knew i knew she killed it so uh she, you know we, we went up there and we started tracking a little blood she goes dad i feel so bad I, I said no you hit it she goes i feel so bad i missed it i said no baby you hit it i said i, I seen seen it you know run off with it carrying its leg and and that that this round nearly took that deer off its feet i mean she buckled backwards you know and and then she caught herself and she started running off you know you could tell she was hit so we had fun i had fun tracking with her because I, I knew where the deer was and and she come out there's a clearing scene and man she's like dad i got it i got it you know and so so we found her deer got all the you know shots of it and she was ecstatic she loved it and I, I was too, obviously, as dad, and and I was really uh, pleased with the that that 125 grain put her down uh, like it did. And when I uh, obviously I gutted it for her, and we brought it home, hung it up. When I butchered it, I th I recovered the bullet. Now this deer's kind of facing us this little quarter. It comes in up front of the shoulder, busts the leg, goes the length of the doe and it lodges in that just ahead of the rear ham in that flank uh meat and that's where it was beautiful mushroom here's a picture of it okay now here's the recovered slug from the uh doe she shot like i say this went in the doe's front shoulder she's slight uh, almost head on but slightly quartering towards us it went through the entire body to the opposite uh, flank and that's where I recovered it and so um, that was uh, pretty sweet so um, she had no problem at all <clears throat> putting it where it needed to be especially uh, you know shooting as quick and off of a stick as as quick as she did so fast forward about three or four days we got back out hunting she she had still had a buck tag to fill and so we were hunting at this uh, uh new to us place kind of a place overgrown just a couple openings and there was just a little opening in the woods that you know where if you've seen a deer it's on you before you know it you know one of those things probably the farthest we could see is about 70 yards 
so we're sitting there sitting there and just you know 30 minutes for dark 30 minutes where you can't see your light uh, sights through the scope uh we heard something coming i said okay get your i gave her the shooting stick i said okay get the gun up point it towards the ground but get it on the stick get ready and so huh, and i seen something at first i thought man that's a stinking big old coon coming and then i got the turn broadside to us about 70 yards i said oh crap that's a hog i said i said baby i said put it put the gun uh, crosshairs on his shoulders and, and i shoot him and i said i'll stop him so i, I grinded real loud and the hog stopped and he's looking around and she's not shooting i'm so what is the deal i look over and she hadn't even cocked the hammer she was trying to pull this trigger and and there was a lot of tall grass anyway like i said this is and he's the hog started moving down again i said oh man i said you gotta cock the hammer so she cocked the hammer i said okay i'm gonna stop him again so i grunted right before he went out of sight he stopped and there was a few seconds and boom man all i seen was squealing and feet sticking up there just and i knew she nailed him and so um i took the rifle i said stay here if for some reason he charges climb that little sapling right there and so i went over there and she'd hit him perfect right in the shoulder that bullet that was her first boar it was a young boar that bullet went through the close shoulder traveled through them and through the other shoulder and i recovered that bullet in the hide of an offside and here's that bullet now this is a slug i recovered from the far shoulder of the hog she shot the hog was about a 200 pound boar uh, it was a good size boar uh, i don't know if you're seeing i don't know i can never tell if it, i'm getting a good picture with this camera or not a little, a little blood meat still i hadn't cleaned it up and uh, maybe right there can you see I mean, you can't complain about that. 125 grand through both shoulders of 200 pound hog at 80 yards. Okay. Now, while I'm quite happy with the accuracy of these, and obviously I'm really ecstatic about how these bullets performed, let me tell you why I may never buy another box of Remington ammo. The very first round out of this box I put in that rifle was a dud and if it had only been one time maybe I could have accepted that although I shoot a lot of Hornady and a lot of federal ammo and I've never had a dud from them but in the last eight to ten years I would say me and a lot of others well I'll put it this way uh there was once I had my other favorite round 7 mm 8 and i bought a new box of 140 grain 7 mm 8 here a couple years ago opened them up you know shook the carrier out and there were two rounds with dented necks not just a little bit bad how in the world did they ever get out of production and i was so livid um but back then I thought, oh, okay, well, it just happens. Well, I started hearing people saying, um, you know, I had a dud here and I had a dud there. And I'm thinking, you know, I've shot Remington's for 35 plus years. Ever since I was a kid. That's what my dad used. I loved them. You didn't hear of a Remington ammo failing. You just didn't hear it. But last eight, 10 years, I hear it all the time. And oddly enough, the next day when I was out the range, shooting uh, my, my 30-30 there was a guy out there stopped by Walmart got some Remington 30 odd 6 150 grain I believe and he was shooting him trying to side his rifle in he had a dud and I'm saying you know what this is ridiculous it's unacceptable what if you know you're facing down a, a grizzly or a wild hog and you got him in your sights, and that gun goes click. 
unacceptable. Or what if, uh, you know, some punks, oh, I almost dropped them bullets. Um, what if some punks, hoodlums are breaking in your house, trying to harm you and your family. You got them in your sight, and that first round goes click on a dud round. Remington, there's a hell of a lot more stake at, uh, uh, and responsibility low ammo than whether someone punches the center of paper or gets a trophy buck. A lot more at stake. People's lives are at stake when they trust your ammo. And I, I just don't know if I'll ever buy another box. Um, fortunately, like I said earlier, Federal makes 125 grain hollow point that is light, light recoil. And I believe Hornady makes a, a light version that has 150 grain. So, um, there's about half a box left. I'm going to let my buddy shoot these um, for, I think his nephew wants to go. And he's going to put these in his 3030 and use those for his nephew. And But I, I, I'm so close to stop buying Remington ammo that I'm just sick about it. I love their ammo. I've used it for years. But it just seems like here lately, when I say lately, the last 10 years, that their ammo has been, as far as reliability, has in the crapper and uh, you know y'all really need to get your act together uh, there's no excuse to have a dud never had a dud from hornady never had a dud from federal and i shot eh, probably a decent amount of winchester in fact uh, my old 7 millimeter array the winchester featherlight um i shot the um uh, what was it the winchester da, 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 da. uh I do not remember. I don't think it was the silver tips. Whichever it was, I shot that for 12 years. Never had a dud in those. The only duds and bad ammo I've ever got come in a green box with Remington on it. And that's a shame because that's, that's like finding out your childhood superhero is a, is a wimp or something. I mean, it just kind of breaks your heart. But anyway, so as you can see, these 125 grain Remington mandricles. I mean, they work like they should. There is no reason you can't take these with a, a new shooter, a new hunter, who might get recoil sensitive uh, because these things are really light recoiling. Um, I'd say less less than a 243. Uh, I mean, I, that's just my opinion. Shooting a lot of guns. Um, maybe a tad more than a 223. I, I, if I had to guess against something, um, but the bullets themselves, true core locks, man, they hammered everything she shot at. So we're still after her first buck, and I hope her luck changes this weekend and, and that we get a shot at one. But I just want to do this review for y'all because I know a lot of y'all are, you know, have wondered about these. I've heard people say, oh, managed recoils, they ain't no good. They, they, the bullets don't expand, blah, 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 blah. And it's just, it's just idiots who have no idea what they're talking about because proof in the pudding right here the accuracies here with these the the bullet performance of mushrooming and and putting game on this you know giving game a dirt nap it's there so if you've got a young shooter or even if they're not young maybe an old shooter who doesn't like be slammed with heavy recoil um or something like that uh get them some managed recoil uh, at least in the 3030 these things are these are game takers and I really like this so um, I hope this reviews helped you um, like I said I know there's a lot of ne negative press out there about uh, managed recoil loads and from what I've seen with these 3030 and other rifles it's all bump it's like I said it's idiots who don't know what they're talking about who couldn't shoot if you know their life depended on it they make bad shot well that bullet didn't that bullet didn't perform no it was you who didn't perform bullet did its job but bullets only as good as where you put it so anyway hey donald for 918 outdoors don't forget to check out the blog at 918outdoors.com and thank you for watching please like and subscribe and we'll catch you on down the road